We're pleased to be joined by uh, Matt Ross, founder, One River School of Art and Design. Good to see you, Matt. Nice to see you. Describe your organization. Yeah, so we're, we're different. We are an art school that really teaches through the lens of living artists. We're trying to create uh, experiences that really celebrate the art of today mm. through a method and a process that we created, wrote, and have now been executing over six plus years. We're in nine locations in five states. And we've got an ambitious plan to grow and bring arts to communities around America. You know, you were talking right before we got in there, you have a background in broadcasting yeah. for about 20 years, you said. Yes. You were the general manager of a significant yes. radio station in this market. Yes. Um, what made you think that there was, there? I use the term again, a market for yeah. what you're doing? So it's interesting, there's a stepping stone. So in 2005, I've left, I left radio broadcasting for 20 years and went to invest in and be the CEO of the School of Rock which is That's, a yeah. national network of music yeah, we've schools. we've done features on it. Yeah, and I built that business from about five to 55 schools in four years, and um, recession hit. We wound up bringing on an institutional investor. I stayed on for a year and left. When I left in 2010, I sort of stepped back and said, go back to work for corporate America and commute, uh -uh. or build on what I've been doing. And I really had this inquisitiveness and curiosity about um, childhood and adolescent development. And I really was intrigued by visual arts and contemporary art, and I wanted to explore it. So I got my 10,000 hours in about 18 months of self-discovery and education and went to work building a business plan. I'm curious about this. Arts education, you'll be part of a larger discussion we have on this subject uh, with, with three other colleagues. Yep. When it comes to arts education, why are we so far behind? I don't know that anyone is ahead of the curve. What I mean? So... I think we beat ourselves up a lot, you know. Um, arts is always the stepchild. We, it doesn't get funding, doesn't get funding. The fact is, is we live in a world where most people think through the practical lens and they think through the vocational lens. And they have led, been led to believe, because we were raised this way, that there's a struggling artist potential in our kids and we don't want that for them. What happens is it becomes a case of arrested sort of development in the sense that we don't nurture their sort of creative thinking and spatial thinking and abstract thinking to its maximum potential because we fear it might get in the way of them having a practical plan. This is my own sociological sort of analysis right. of this. I believe that for people to be fully developed, they really need to invest in themselves and their full potential. And it's great if you've got math and science skills, but you know, Columbia now at the med program teaches drawing in their medical program because it, helps the mind grow and think differently and allows you to deploy different thinking that solves problems. So I wholeheartedly believe that I've watched thousands and thousands of kids grow up through the School of Rock, which is a business I ran, and now through One River School. And I see this sense of curiosity and development that happens organically through play first, and then practice, and then having fun through it and getting better at it. And then you apply yourself more. So. You know, it's interesting as I'm listening to you, um your success, it seems to me, is a product of your passion for what you do, yep. an entrepreneurial, an intense, yes. uh, unabiding entrepreneurial spirit, yes. a tenacity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. So here's what I'm curious about. When it comes to music, the arts, to what degree can you teach, dare I call it, this yeah. intense entrepreneurial spirit that some of us who have you know, I'm not, it's not about me or anything, but what we do today is a product of just that. Yes. 20, between 25 and 30 years ago, we decided to do this, to create this, to go out and raise the money sure. for it, to build sure. a team. to do. And every day it's a challenge and it's exciting. But what I'm trying to get at is there are people who are artists who very often don't have that skill set and are looking for someone else to somehow set them up. Am I making too much of this? Yeah, no. So I think there's a couple things that I'm hearing. One is this notion of how do you sort of activate your most entrepreneurial skill set. Yeah. Um, and be your own best advocate. Yeah, and artists need that. And I think there is a coaching model for them. I think some get it really well on their own. Um, but I can make you a, a um, sprinter if you're not a sprinter. So in other words, if you're a one in sprinting, maybe I can get you to a four. But maybe there's other skills that you have that allow you to sort of facilitate your growth. I kind of think of all of us as having a sort of broad spectrum of skills, but we've got core strengths. Right. And I, this is sort of, um, Don Clifton started this through the Gallup uh, 
sort of evaluation of people's strengths and traits, and I believe in that. So inevitably, the most important thing is finding out who you are, what you do best, and spending most of the time accelerating those things that you do best, building compensatory skills for the things so you do well. Do the arts help you do that? I think they do in so many ways because, you know, there's just pure problem solving in mm -hmm. art making constantly. Iterative, for example? Iterative, iterative thinking. So you start a painting with a blank canvas. Most, some artists have a drawing that is, in essence, the preparatory work for a painting. So they've gone through this process to sort of prepare a plan to produce something that is a more finished version of it. Other folks go, nope, I just step to the canvas and I improvise, right? Now, I can't tell you to improvise if you're a planner, a focused, thoughtful, strategic thinking artist. Um, but you might get better if you challenge yourselves with drills that might actually just be free form art making. Mm. So I think there's so many different ways that the sort of creative brain ultimately gets um, at its own sort of pure potential. But this brain that can be developed through art making from the early stages mm. through adulthood serves you in life. It serves you in problem solving, relationship building, and all sorts of things. Matt, before I let you out here, some yep. of the exhibits that we can expect from your operation? Yes, yeah, so we do exhibitions from emerging artists in our five schools right now. We've got a guy named Jesse Greenberg who curated emerging artists. I'm glad you asked about that. We show working living artists who are showing around the world in our schools and we think it's important for people to walk in off the street in Allendale or Milburn or you know, Westchester or Inglewood. Why do they need to see that? Because they have no sense of relevance. So uh, I go in the city, the city, Philadelphia, New York yes, City. Yes, how whatever. often? How You're often right. does it happen? Because we live in a world of our own necessary tasks on a daily, weekly basis. We don't have ex excess time. And in suburbia where we are, we're often raising kids. And we're married to their calendar and, and clock. And why should that be mutually exclusive with appreciation for the arts? It, it, sh shouldn't. it shouldn't be. It doesn't have to be. It shouldn't be. And mostly what people think of as art making is the art of yesterday. So we wrote a curriculum and a methodology that celebrates the art of today. And we teach that in our, in our lesson plans. And we try to create more appreciation for living artists because there's two million of them in One America. One to ten, uh, how much do you love what you do? <laughs> ten point five. Easier just, more than ten. Yeah, no question. Matt Ross. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you, you joining us and, and be part of our larger discussion. And folks who go on our website, steveautobato.org, you can check it out if you haven't uh, seen it on television. Thank Thanks, you, my friend. Appreciate it. Well done. Stay my pleasure. Right there. Thanks. Sure. Check it out next time, folks. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by... The PNC Foundation, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the New Jersey Education Association, Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, the Northward Center, and by Georgian Court University. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.